Welcome to the Superstar Communicator Podcast. My name is Susan Heaton Wright, a leading impact speaking and communications expert. My aim is to show you how to make an impact so you will be heard, listened to, and respected for career success. Listen weekly to the podcast and go to our website, superstarcommunicator.com. Hi there, everybody. This is Susan Heaton Wright from Superstar Communicator. Thank you very much for tuning in. As I record this, England, where I live, is just about to go back into lockdown. I think that oh, there were a number of people that I was speaking to who still felt that we would be meeting each other, working in a way that we had been before, to the point that even last week, an events and hospitality organisation sent me an email as we prepare for live events again, have they not been reading the news, listening to the news, hearing what was going on when half of the country was already in lockdown? It was bizarre, but still there were people that really thought that we would go back to the old ways very quickly. And I wanted to share with you five ways that we can survive and work effectively in lockdown because certainly in England we've been told that it's December the 2nd but you and I know that there is a strong possibility that this could go on for a few months so I've got some five very positive things to think about. So the first one is have a routine. It can be very easy to fall into a groundhog day existence where every day seems the same. I don't know about you, but in the last lockdown, for the first few days, I was muddled. I didn't have those normal things that I would did, such as Monday evening going to orchestra, Wednesday I would um, go to the gym, things like that. The weekly events that we had in the diary are no longer there. And we don't have the reminders whether it's a Tuesday or a Saturday. What I've encouraged people to do is to create a weekly plan with specific events or weekly dates. Now, obviously, since this is the second time we've gone into a major lockdown, people are getting more used to virtual events, whether they are weekly ones or one-off ones. And so we can put those in the diary. We are, we can use these as references to each day, as well as being activities to look forward to. We might not be able to go to a gym class or a local pub quiz in real life, but there could be virtual versions that you could create a weekly routine for. Also having dates to look forward to within the monotony of being in lockdown are hugely important to our emotional well-being. If you aren't attending regular virtual HIT classes or online quizzes, this might be the time to add these to your calendar. Look out for things. Certainly from my point of view, I am doing some virtual wine tasting and virtual crafting, as well as on my viola, I, I do things with the Beno um, Men Ben Benedetti Foundation which is fantastic. It's also important to consider that when we're working in offices, at shared working spaces or at clients, we had to commute to get there and left at a particular time. It's worthwhile considering how you mark your work days. Will you go for a walk before you start work? Will you put on your work clothes? Will you start and finish at a particular time? And at the weekend, wear different clothes. Having a work and weekend routine will really support you in surviving this next lockdown. Number two, check everyone is okay. Now, more than ever, it's so important to check your colleagues, friends and family are okay on a regular basis. It can be very easy to hide your financial and work worries. 
Many people are missing the human interactions from being in an office. Perhaps they don't have a dedicated workspace in their homes, making it more challenging to work effectively. Perhaps their Wi-Fi or even their hardware. You know, they might have a hard, an, an old computer that they're using and they're really struggling to update the software. And it can cause more stress. And certainly there was something in Facebook. Somebody said, I'm really stressed because I just cannot understand to you how to use this software. Um, although I've been in the company for 20 years at a very senior level, my colleagues have said, oh, you'll get used to it. She was getting more and more stressed. I helped her with that. I didn't know her, but I wanted to reach out. There are people that silently are struggling. And if we check that they're OK and have a conversation where we're really listening to them rather than just a checklist, oh, I've, I've asked them if they're OK, then it will make a real difference. If uh, checking everyone's OK at the beginning of a virtual meeting is very good. And if necessary, booking a private one to one chat is hugely beneficial to everyone. Because when we're stressed, we don't work as well as we possibly can. I interviewed wonderful Martin Conway on how to lead with compassion. And that is a previous Superstar Communicator podcast, Leading with Compassion in a Virtual World. And I recommend you grab onto that. Number three, build exercise into your day. When we're working in offices, there are natural times when we walk to the kitchen, to get our lunch, to speak to colleagues and teams in other departments, visiting clients, if you commute, walking to the station or even walking from the car park. Yet now we're in our homes, sitting down for long periods of time. Here's, here are a few recommendations to ensure you have some exercise. Download an app reminder to exercise and stretch every hour. I use Workout Alerts, which is a free app to download. It reminds you to get up and stretch every, way, every hour, as well in, as moving from your screen for a few seconds. T number two, take advantage of the one hour exercise rule outside. If it's cold, wrap up. If it's raining, have an umbrella. Get some exercise and fresh air. And as we are in lockdown, there are fewer cars, so the air is going to be fresher. Number three, there are now plenty of online exercise classes available, as well as YouTube videos. The one I find very useful is Lucy Wyndham Reed's YouTube channel with hundreds of exercise sessions for all levels. They include very short bursts of exercise to 20 to 30 minute exercises and even walking ones that you're doing indoors if it's horrible weather. D, you now have the time to get your bike out and have a ride. Or why not do the couch to 5k challenge? This is a perfect excuse to get moving. Or E, you might consider getting a standing desk, desk or a convertible one so you can stand at times, which is never a bad thing. So the next one is to have some balance in your life. It's very easy to get sucked into working all day and evening. Suddenly you realise that you haven't eaten, moved from your desk and it's late evening. Your life is work with no play. More than ever, it's important to have some downtime. Whether it's rediscovering your passion for playing the guitar, baking or even doing puzzles. Your hobbies and non-work related activities are equally important for your well-being. Here's permission from me to start or rediscover that hobby so you have some me time. And enjoy the weekends. Don't be tempted to do any work. And the last one is get off Zoom. Clients have been reporting to me that, that not only are there employees more stressed but they're walking working more hours meetings and project management sessions where individuals could, would contribute to a mind mapping or problem solving session have been replaced by virtual calls these can be long not focused on outcomes 
are frustrating for everyone involved and prevent anyone completing their own work. It's also very tiring to be on virtual calls all the time. Many of my clients complain that they have back-to-back -back virtual calls all day, they hardly have time for lunch, let alone a cup of coffee, and their to-do list gets ever longer unless they work additional hours to complete work. And since March, this situation has got worse and worse. And now is the time to change this working pattern so that individuals and teams can work more effectively and have more energy. So here are three ways that we can do this. A. Consider if the entire team is required for every meeting. Could this be a conversation off Zoom, perhaps a phone call or a series of emails between two people? Agree with your team that you will respect other people's diaries. Avoid putting meetings in when they already have time blocked out for other activities. Manage your diary carefully. Factor in specific time to do your work. Block it off. Also have a buffer between meetings where you can prepare, go to have a cup of tea, check your emails, etc. If you find your colleagues putting stuff in, um, then you, you need to make it clear that this is already time taken up in your calendar. D. Become aware, aware of how much time you're spending on Zoom. I use a Sectograph app, which again is free, which clearly records how much time I'm spending on each task. Highlighting the percentage time of time you're on vi virtual meetings could be a clear way to ensure you have more balance in your work life or that you need adjusting that. Keep well and safe in these incredible times. And if you're worried or concerned about anything, reach out and ask for help. And if you have any ideas of other topics that I can do or individuals that I can interview, please don't hesitate to contact me. So until next time, this is Susan Heaton Wright from Superstar Communicator. You have been listening to the Superstar Communicator podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and review the podcast on iTunes and on apps. Please contact us if you want to discuss any topic, could suggest a topic for us to include, or a guest who could come onto the podcast. Go to superstarcommunicator.com.